Hello, immense Metropolis lovers and Brazil fans. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jana and this is Curves on the Road. Today, I take you to Sao Paulo. We're at the Samba Sky and we will look down at the city. We're on the 42nd floor of the skyscraper Mirante do Valle. There's a limited number of visitors per day, so I would advise to book this experience in advance. The price differs on the weekdays and weekends, and there's also so-called social rate, and that's discounted price, and you have to bring one kg of non-perishable food. Your ticket is for a specific hour, at that time, you'll be allowed to enter the elevator to the 42nd floor and then you have to queue to get to the main attraction and that's the glass floor view. There are two decks and you're allowed to stay only a minute or two in each of them. So it's just a quick photo opportunity. The capsule is 150 meters above the ground. Crazy feel. Hate it. If you're wondering what Sampa means, it's a nickname that was given to the city by Paulistanos, or the citizens of Sao Paulo. Here is the logo in the shape of the Sao Paulo state. This place is inspired by the Sky Deck in Chicago. The architect went there, loved it and decided to recreate it here in Brazil. Instagrammer's paradise. You have plenty of places to take pictures with the writings and different backgrounds. I really like it. One note, it would be really cool if they washed the windows more often so that you could take clearer pictures, but otherwise, Beautiful, the views are amazing. Now you only realize how big the city is. Overall, great experience, recommend. This building really resembles Empire State Building in New York to me. We're at the Benedictine Monastery, the Monastero de São Bento. The Benedictines came to Brazil in the 16th century, but only in the 17th century the building of a chapel started and it was dedicated to the San Benedict. And this place also hosted the Pope Benedict when he was visiting Brazil. The monastery has its own theater and of course a place for worship, but also it has its own bakery. They bake some cookies and bread here. We are at the gardens of Patio de Colegio, or translated a schoolyard. Here at this place, in 1554, Sao Paulo was founded. And it was the first permanent Portuguese settlement in the Americas. So it's a very important historical place. We went inside the church, I would say. Uh, there, it's, it's quite dark and you're not allowed to take pictures, so we didn't. And there's also a bone of a saint. Before the settlers arrived, this area was inhabited by the indigenous people called Tupi. 
The city of Sao Paulo started as a mission founded by two saints. And actually one of the saints has now the femur in the Patio do Colegio. The Jesuit ideology clashed with the settlers because they were strongly against the slavery and the settlers' economy was based on the slave labor. In 1953, the, this place was given back to the Jesuits to commemorate 400 years from the first settlement. From Pateo do Colegio, it's only a couple of minutes walk to the Cathedral da Sé. Ironically, this is actually one of the most dangerous parts of Sao Paulo. It is a common knowledge that if you take your phone out to take pictures, you might be an easy target for pickpockets. And to be honest, we were the minority on the square in the ratio 1 to 10 with the homeless people. One founder of Sao Paulo and the other founder of Sao Paulo. We are now in Iberapuera Park. It is an artificially made park, but it's the most visited park in Brazil. Over 14 million people in one year visit this park. It was inspired by the English parks in Europe, and lots of trees were imported here to create this gorgeous space. <laughs> okay, I couldn't be a Tarzan, guys, but did you see these trees? How immense they are! And I think they are like sprouting down and creating more of the tree. This is spectacular. Okay guys, this is as much of the tropical exotic big birds you're getting. Iberapuera is a very good neighborhood here in Sao Paulo. So here the safety is a bit better than in the very center. You can walk freely, take pictures, watch the beautiful fountain behind me. I believe at night it's even lit. So if you get a chance to get here after dark, you might see this with some light show. I believe there should be some music playing with it because it seems to be doing some sort of choreography. Without the music, it feels random, but I believe that there is some sense behind this. But it's perfect. If you want to chill in the park for a little bit, this might be the place for you. Apart from the natural beauty, there is also an architectural gem. The famous architect Oskar Niemeyer designed this auditorium and I think it's really cool. We are at the entrance to the auditorium. Unfortunately, we can't visit inside, but we can at least see the beautiful hall. The architecture here is stunning. I love it. It's so brilliant. I love this modern kind of architecture. Yeah, Oscar, you nailed this one.
Near the Iberapuera Park, there is a monument of the Banderas, the 17th century settlers who came to South America. It is a bit of a controversial monument because the Banderas killed and enslaved a lot of the indigenous people of Brazil. Do Bachman. It's basically a small street that became famous because of the murals. This should be the first one here, the Batman. That's why it got the name. It's a curious place. It's really tricky to park here, but when you are in a parking spot, definitely come here. It's all free. You can't drive in it, so you're safe to wander around the road, check the murals. It's very artsy, very boho. I really like the vibe here. Arts of Sao Paulo. It was actually designed by a female architect. She was inspired by the lines and she wanted to make something extraordinary and this little museum defies the gravity. I think she succeeded pretty well. Unfortunately we won't have time to go inside but there should be huge collections of modern art from all over the world. Temple of Gluttony. We're in the Teatro Municipal de Sao Paulo. It's one of the biggest theaters in Brazil and it's inspired by the Paris Opera Garnier. There's some exhibition going on today, so we'll see that and I'll show you the beautiful interiors. Their motto is, our soul is classic, but our hearts beat here and now. There's some modern art exhibition going on and it's really big contrast to the style of uh, the theater. The building now houses the symphonic orchestra, the lyric choir and the city ballet. Unfortunately there was no performance we would like to see so I'll just show you around the theater but we will not go see the performance. There are many many celebrities that were performing in this theater. Maria Callas, Ella Fitzgerald, or Enrico Caruso, for, to name just a few. This theater was built in the colonizing times from the money from exporting coffee. Because of the exhibition, they won't let us in the auditorium to show you the stage, but at least these halls are really magnificent. Does it resemble 
Palais Garnier. I can see the resemblance in the statues at the entrance and maybe the vast space. But I would say the architecture style is a bit different. This resembles Art Nouveau for me. Please let me know down in comments if you've been to Opera Garnier or here in Brazil, which one you like better. So that's it. That's the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you give me an opera thumb up and you can subscribe to my channel. I upload every Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day and bye.